ComfortDelGro used to be a market darling. I'm not kidding you, really. Look at this chart over here. You realize that from 2012 to 2015, its share price almost doubled, correct? And then it peaked out at $3.20 in June 2015. Why so? Simple reason, because Uber was first developed in 2014 and eventually Grab was formed in Singapore in 2017. Grab and Uber actually merged in Singapore for 2018 and subsequently you realize that the taxi pie is now getting eaten up by them. In my opinion, that part of the taxi pie is lost forever already. But it's all not lost for ComfortDelGro. Let me give you some details. Today in 2021, you realize that ComfortDelGro share price is depressed. You see that in terms of its EV over EBITDA, it's the cheapest in terms of all STI stocks. In terms of its 3-year book value, you realize that it's trading at a very distressed price, correct? And today, let me share with you some insights as to why the worst may be over for ComfortDelGro. If you're keen, stay on for it. Hi guys, welcome back. Let me first share with you a quick overview of ComfortDelGro. ComfortDelGro actually has many pieces of business and it's actually a global company. Let's start by understanding its subsidiaries and the first one to bring up is actually Viacom. ComfortDelGro owns 67% of Viacom and back in the early 2010s, value investing was very popular. Viacom was a very hot choice and simply because it had a monopoly in the vehicle inspection business. But if you look at this chart over here, you realize that the growth of his business has been quite flat, correct? And nowadays when we are all looking for growth investments, Viacom naturally falls off the flavor. And then I have a quick question for you. Would our transition for all vehicles to become electric vehicles eventually impact Viacom or not? Let me hear your thoughts in the comment sections below and I'll actually share with you my answer towards the end of this video. Up next is SBS Transit, a very important subsidiary of ComfortDelGro. ComfortDelGro owns 74% of SBS Transit, which is actually a very beautiful business. Previously, SBS Transit had to handle depreciation of buses, correct? And there was that major review with LTA. So moving forward, SBS Transit actually leases buses from LTA. LTA owns all the buses, so the depreciation risk is nationalized. And then SBS becomes an asset light business. And what do you realize in this revenue chart that I have to share with you? It's been growing very steadily over the last few years, correct? Of course, in 2020, we see a slight dip simply because when there's so much work from home and so much lockdowns, there's no need to operate so many buses and naturally the revenue and profits drop. If you look in terms of profits, it's also shown very steady gains. And this has naturally been a sore point when it comes to forumers because they complain that, hey, SBS Transit is making so much revenue and profit. Why are we increasing bus fares all the time? That question is a good social debate, but as always, as investors, this is a good business to look at. And if you look at the latest quarter, you realize that SBS has posted a 23.3 million profit. Of course, there are effects of grants embedded within their performance, but 23.3 million is actually a very strong quarterly performance. And last but not least, SBS Transit also owns trains. So in total, SBS Transit provides comfort they'll grow with 1.2 to 1.5 billion in terms of revenue when it's consolidated, which is about 40% of the pie. So the question is, where is the remaining of public transport coming from? And the answer is actually in the overseas operations. Second, in terms of contribution for ComfortDelGro is actually in UK. If you look at UK and Australia, you realize that one is showing decreasing revenue, correct? But one is showing increasing revenue. Why so? Why is UK showing decreasing revenue? The simple answer is because UK operations is heavily dependent on taxis. ComfortDelGro owns UK Computer Cab, which is the biggest black cab taxi service in London itself. But as we know again, Uber is now eating into the pie of taxis. But Australia on the other hand is focused more on public transport buses and I'll get to it in a while. Now I have to share with you this image over here that shows the income statement for first half 2021 which is after vaccinations have been produced and what is it contrasting to 2020. Realize that in 2020, ComfortDelGro actually showed losses, correct? And that amounted to 76.5 million. But now ComfortDelGro has shown a gain of 77.4 million without factoring in grants. That is a key learning point which reinforces transportation business also suffers when we go into lockdown. But lockdowns are probably behind us already, right? And that's why we can assume that ComfortDelGro is unlikely to see quarterly losses anymore moving forward. Because I guess even countries which are very tight like Australia are kind of fatigued by such lockdown measures anymore. And what has actually swung performances? The key part is actually in taxis. If we examine, taxis have actually shown a big loss last year in 2020 with a lot of rental rebates given to our taxi uncles and aunties. 
But now, 2021, you realize that the taxi business has gained $17.9 million. Of course, that has certain grants still factored in. And as I've shared in a previous video, I believe that when tourists start to come back more into Singapore, we will see that the taxi business will start to pick up again. And not only that, the same effect should be seen also in London, as well as China where ComfortDelGro has certain operations of taxis. Now have I addressed ComfortDelGro sufficiently? If I have, smash the like button, it's taking our team hours to produce this content for you. We'll be covering more investment ideas as well as topics such as retirement planning in the coming weeks ahead. Now let's dive back to the part where I'm positive about ComfortDelGro for 2022. And it's actually this point, which is Australia, something I've mentioned you know, in the middle of this video. ComfortDelGro is looking to list its Australia assets. This move is very similar to what Wilma International has done with its China subsidiary. Listing assets allow ComfortDelGro to cash in on some of the growth that its Australian subsidiary has displayed over the last few years. ComfortDelGro has invested more than a billion dollars into Australia, and they own a fleet of more than 1,100 vehicles over there. And I've actually some pictures of the buses. This is one that is in Sydney, where we can recognize the bridge on top. And this map actually shows where ComfortDelGro is dominant in. They are mainly in Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria. And I've latest news also that Australia is really opening up. They used to be very conservative when it comes to combating COVID-19. But Australia's government seems to have yielded to public pressure to start opening up, especially when vaccination rates have increased. So expect news that we can all travel again to Australia, and then that should naturally impact the tourist flow which will use all these bus services. Last but not least, as a further point there for ComfortDelGro, they are now investing into New Zealand also. This is a contract that they have won recently, a 1.13 billion contract to operate Auckland Rail. And this is his first foray into New Zealand. I've looked at the details. Per year, that amounts to about 140 million, and at least project about 5 million in terms of net profit. But 5 million doesn't move the needle too much. The main part is now they diversify into New Zealand. Hopefully, they can also start providing bus services once they have a foot in door with the local transport authorities over there. Now, since you stayed here, let me give you the question which I asked us now. With electric vehicles coming big into Singapore in the coming 5-10 years ahead, will that impact Viacom's business? My gut feeling is no. Because if you look carefully at what Viacom is doing, they are doing vehicle inspection. And part of Viacom's service is to look at the engine and make sure that there is no illegal modifications to things. They also do inspections on, for example, the ERP system. We are moving to ERP 2.0, which still requires somebody to make sure that there is no tampering of the machine itself. And all this will still stay, regardless whether we are using an internal combustion engine or electric vehicle. So that's my guess. If you agree, smash the like button. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to a previous video I've done before. You know we talk so much about comfort they'll grow, and that the taxi pie looks to be eaten up by Grab already. Have you seen this presentation I've done before on Grab? Grab has actually delayed its spec IPO. And while Grab has actually attacked ComfortDelGro's taxi business, they are not likely going to touch too much on the public transport business. They are morphing into a super app. So if you've seen the presentation, inviting you there to really understand another investment idea that could interest you further. If that's Asana from here, thank you for watching, take care and goodbye.